It's June 2016 and about a week ago Adobe released an update for their programs also for Premiere Pro which now has again a tons of new features and one of which is the secondary color correction within Lumetri. And to show you what it can do, you can actually select one specific color in your shot and manipulate that one. And that's what we'll be doing inside this tutorial video. Hey, what's up guys? It's already here for Cinecom.net and as you can see, we've selected one color in this shot and made the rest black and white. And that's something we can do with the new feature within uh, Premiere Pro. And you can find that in your Lumetri color tools and if you go all the way down, you can find HSL secondary, which stands for U Saturation and Lightness. Now having this feature truly means that Adobe Premiere Pro now has all the basic functions that we need for color correction or color grading. And that's awesome that they do that. It's like the same thing with DaVinci Dissolve, who's actually putting more editing uh, functionality in that program. As with Premiere, they're actually putting in more color correction tools in their program. So it's great to see that actually color correction and editing is becoming one part. You don't have to go to a separate program anymore like we used to do in the early days. So let's take a look at how we can do that. And to start with, I'm actually going to drag my clip into a new sequence like that. And now we can start with a blank page. This right here is the shot. And as you can see, we've got one color which is actually coming out pretty well. And we can select that one, the blue shirt of this guy. And if you open up that tab, HLS secondary, we see that we have actually three steps that we have to go through. The first step is the key. And that means we have to select which color that we want to actually work on. And if you open that one up, you can see that we have to set the color. You can just take that color picker and select that blue color from his shirt. You can also add a color and a great thing here is that you actually select two outer colors. So one would be the more um, lighter blue from uh, his shirt here on top where the sun is at and then another color here more in his sleeve somewhere where there's some kind of a shadow so we have now two tints of blue. And you can also to say to remove a color if that's needed. For example, if you have something that is coming pretty close to that blue color, you can also select that, but that's not the case in this shot. Perhaps you could select the sky, but it was a cloudy day, so we don't need to deselect that one. All right, so now we have some more controls here to actually refine that keying that we've just done. And to see what we've selected, we can use this box down below here. And if we're going to check that with this box right here, it will actually show the gray which is not selected and the actual color that is selected. But you also have uh, some other options if you choose, for example, to go with color and black, or you can also go with white and black. And now the white is the color that has been selected. And we can work on the U right now. Perhaps you want to like uh, make the range a bit bigger to select more of that color or remove that range a bit. You can also change the feather by uh, using this bar right here. So that, that means the feather of the color. Also for the saturation, perhaps increase that, the uh, range, or move that a bit to the left or to the right. You have to see what it does to your mask. And try to select as much as possible uh, from the object that you want to select the color from but avoid to select anything else in your shot. You see that we have some other things, but we're going to deal with those later. It's not a huge problem if they don't come too close to the object that you want to actually key out. Then also the lightness here you can also change or, or increase or decrease that um, range. All right, so let's assume that we have done a pretty good job now with the keying. Now we can actually refine that mask because this is a mask that we've created now. And uh, we can close that key and go to refine now. And here we've actually got two options. We've got one denoise and blur. Often you would see if you're going to do a mask on a color that it will actually kind of give some noise because it's uh, looking for the correct color. The color is changing as the, as the image is moving. So that's why you can also use this denoise option. And uh, by moving this up and down, you can also see in your mask what it actually does. I always suggest to do this a little bit, not too much. The same thing for the blur. Here you can instantly see what it does so that you don't have those hard edges. Uh, but don't exa exaggerate with this uh, unless it's a very specific something, but you can add a little bit of this, but I wouldn't do it too much. It's like feathering when doing a green key or something. You actually want to avoid that, but sometimes it's just needed. And then finally, we are at the correction tab. And right here is the stuff where it all happens here. Here you can change what has to be done with his shirt or the selected color. So you can already see here, we can change that color so we can make that more of a green shirt or something. Um, what else do we got here? Like a pink shirt. Kind of looks cool as well. Uh, you can also change it to, to temperature. 
This is pretty good for skin tone sometimes or the tint. Uh, I also can uh, change the contrast, sharpness, and saturation. This is something pretty cool. You, with this, you can actually create that Sin City look where actually the whole scene is black and white and one specific color, usually that was red in uh, Sin City. Uh, but at the moment, when we're going to decrease the saturation, you will see that it will only apply on a shirt because we've got that one selected. But let's assume that you want to have the background uh, black and white and a shirt still in color. Well, what you then have to do is go back to your key. And from here, I'm just going to like make this, make this panel a little bit bigger. Right here, we've got this button and that will actually allow us to invert our selection. And by clicking on that, it will actually, yeah, like invert our key. And now we can uh, do all these things here, like add some contrast, uh, add some sharpness, perhaps, saturation, everything, color temperature, doesn't matter, on the background, and have that shirt really uh, pop out right now. Oh yeah, by the way, you're also able to work on the levels. If you click on this icon right here, we have the three-way color correction. So now you can work uh, on these colors here in the shadows, midtones, and the highlights. Like perhaps you want to say to increase a bit more uh, lightness in the shadows and decrease a bit more in the highlights to have a flatter image. Uh, so you can play with that here in as well. So that is essentially how the secondary color correction works within the Lumetri tool set. Now I want to go a little bit deeper into this, uh, a little bit more advanced, because uh, we've got this shirt selected now. This is pretty cool. But also in the background here, if I want to like zoom in, put this to 100%, you will see that um, the shirt, first of all, is not perfectly keyed out. That's because we can't really do it too aggressive because that will also select other colors, like here, this uh, steer of the bike, and we don't want that. So I'm just put this back on fit because we have a little workaround for that. First of all, we're just going to do a very aggressive keying. So I'm going to go back to key right here. And uh, let me just take out a big range here like that. Also here, the saturation, like really take a lot of that. Try to find a way so you can select most of it. Don't be afraid to really pull, up, pull out an aggressive key here. Same thing goes for the lightness. There we go. As you can see here in our, in our mask, I'm just gonna put this back on, we are selecting way too much. But that's okay, because here's the workaround. We're going to create a second mask only around his shirt. Now, if we are really going to key out his shirt, then we wouldn't need that secondary color correction. And keying out his whole shirt, well, that's just too time intensive. So we're going to use both the secondary color correction and a very simple mask, actually. So to do that, we actually wanna duplicate this layer right here. So hold down your Alt key and drag your clip to channel number two to make a duplication. Now select your upper clip and we're going to create a mask now for the opacity. And I'm just going to take a very simple circle, but make sure you are in the beginning of your shot as well. There we go. And I'm just going to move that circle around his shirt. Now this definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Just something like this, this is already good. Now just make sure that in that circle, no other uh, colors are selected from your mask. So make sure to double check that if you're going to check that in black and white. So I see we have like a little bit here of that blue, but you know, that's okay. We don't have the steering wheel in that uh, mask or other things, or perhaps the sky, which could have also been blue that day, but it wasn't. It was a, a gray day that day. Anyways, uh, let's do some tracking now because we actually want to follow this mask so that it stays on that shirt. And that's done pretty simple by just pr pressing on this uh, play button right here from the mask pads. By the way, we also have a tutorial on this and how you can actually change the skin tones uh, by working with such masks. You can click in the cart up there to see that tutorial. And the tracking has been completed. All these keyframes have been made. And now you can see that the mask also follows a little bit the, uh, the shirt of that guy. So now we have an aggressive keying on top. And what we're going to do with the uh, layer below, we're going to do a less aggressive keying. Uh, so we're going to select that one, go back to our secondary color correction, and just make these a lot smaller so that you don't see um, any more of those things in the back. So they're not selected in the keying. So perhaps you really want to fine tune this something like this this looks perfect so now we don't have anything selected anymore the steering wheel is not in that selection only the shirt because we're using that top layer so this is how we can select one color of a specific object to create such a beautiful effect by the way guys if you would like to practice on these clips here as well then you can download the project file and the source clips by clicking in the cart up there or you can also find the link in the description below Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. And as always, stay creative.